All right, here are solutions for perfect problem three for math 211. Um, this is me trying to combine together two different topics from our class. I don't know if I did a good job or not. Um, this idea of relations and then this idea of writing numbers in different faces. So what's going on is we're defining a relation. All your questions have to do with relations, but the way the relation is defined has to do with writing numbers in different faces. So consider the set of the 10, base 10 numbers from 16 to 25. And what I'm gonna eventually do is I'm gonna define a relation on this set where two elements are related if the way you write them is the same in two different bases. Essentially, that's what I'm saying. So um, there will be an arrow from 16 to 19, for example, um, because in base five, 16 is written as three one, and in base six, 19 is written as three one. So it's three one in either case, 16 and 19 look the same in two different bases. So so I think to do this, in fact, I just tell you to do this. I think the easiest way to do this is to write these numbers in their respective bases. So 16 in base three. When you write 16, that means one group of 10 and six singles. When you write 23 here, that means two groups of 10 and three singles. In base three, it's different. In base three, the first number you write is not a group of 10, it's a group of three. Similarly, if you had a three digit number here, the like 123, that one would be one group of 100. But in base three, that one would be one group of nine. So what I'll do is I'll go through and write all these numbers in the respective bases. So if I wanna end up with 16, I can get there with one group of nine, and then two groups of six, sorry, two groups of three, which makes six, and then one single. So this is nine, and six more, and one more gives you 16. And then 17, 18, 19, well, it turns out that you don't have to go through and it's easier to count up. One more than one, two, one will be one, two, two. One more than one, two, two would be two, zero, zero. It's because if I add one here, I get three, but there is no base, there is no three in base three. So I kind of carry over and that gets this two. If you can't follow that logic, then think about it like this is two groups of nine, zero groups of three, and zero singles, which is exactly 18. And you keep counting up, you get two, zero, one. 202, 210, 211, 212, 220, and 221. You might want to check one of these. 221, uh, yeah, that's two nines and two threes and one more it gives me 25. Base four, same idea, except now the first number I write represents 16. The second number I write, reading these left to right, represents four and this would be a one. So if I want 16, that's one, zero, zero. If I want 17, that's one, zero, one, one, zero, two, one, zero, three. Now one, one, zero, one, 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 two, one, one, three, one, two, zero, and one, two, one. And again, not a bad idea to check. Here's 16 plus eight more gives me 24 plus one more gives me 25. All right, base five. That would be three fives and one more. And one more than that would be three two, three three, three four, and then one more than that is four zero. Note that four fives and nothing more gives me 20. Four one, four two, four three, four four, and then one zero zero, one group of 25, zero fives and zero singles gives me 25. And finally, base six. 16, let's see, that's two sixes. That gets me 12. I still need four more. So it'd be two four. And 17 would be two five. And then three zero, three one, three two, three three, three four, three five, four zero, and four one. Okay, now that I have all of those, I can define my relation. You can do it with arrow diagrams or by listing the elements. I'm going to list the elements. Uh, so what I'm looking for are kind of common pairs here. One, two, one, does that show up anywhere over here? Well, it does. Here's a one, two, one, and here's a one, two, one. So what that means is I need an arrow from 16 to 25. Um, and then I guess I'd also need an arrow from 25 to 16. And the reason I need one from 25 to 16 is because 25 is written the same as 16, just as 16 is written the same as 25 in those two bases respectively. What about one, two, two? Well, I don't see that over here. Similar for the rest of these numbers. These would all too big, be too big to be on these lists. Uh, what about one, zero, zero? Do you see that anywhere? Yeah, I think you do. There's a 16 and 25 again. Hey, interesting. 
I already listed that one, so I don't need to write it again. 101, does that show up anywhere? Nope, that's not on either of these lists, and I already know it's not over there because I didn't already circle it. Um, and similarly for the rest of these numbers. What about these guys? Uh, let's see, 3, 1 shows up over here. So here's a 3, 1, and here's a 3, 1. Uh, so that means there should be an arrow from 16 to, what is that, 19? And therefore also an arrow from 19 to 16. I think that's the one that was given in this problem up here. And then 3, 2 shows up on both lists, as does 3, 3, and 3, 4. So what that means is I want arrows from 17 to 20, and therefore 20 to 17, and 18 to 21, and 21 to 18, and 19 to 22, and 22 to 19. I think those were all the ones I just circled. Uh, what about four zero? Yep, that makes my list too. That shows up, that's a 20 and a 24. Uh, I'm supposed to get the comma right there. And therefore there's a 24 to 20. And four one, and I think that's my last one. So what's that, 21 to 25? So those are all my ordered pairs up here. Often you put parentheses around these, but that seemed like a lot of parentheses. So I'll just leave it like this. Squig no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, okay, so that's one. Two says, determine if the relation is reflexive. It's not reflexive. To be reflexive, you need an arrow from every single element to itself. You need uh, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, and so on. And not only do is it not the case that all of those exist, none of them exist in this case. Not reflexive. Uh, 16, 16 is missing, for example. Lots of others. You might have said 17, 17 is missing. That's true, too. Uh, is it symmetric? Yes. It is symmetric. And that's because if some pair is in there, like AB, so is BA. And the reason that works is like if you can write 18 the same way as you can write 24, then you can write 24 the same way as you can write 18. Um, kind of by definition, this is symmetric. What about transitive? Turns out it's not. It's a good thing it's not because it's a pain to check for transitivity. Uh, it's easier to prove that something's not transitive. You just find one counterexample. Uh, so if I'm looking for a counterexample in here, there is an arrow from 17 to 20, and an arrow from 20 to 24, but it doesn't look like there's an arrow from 17 to 24. So not transitive because 17, 20, and 20, 24 exist. But 1724 does not. So it's not transitive. Uh, I wonder if there are other examples you could have come up with transfer for transitivity. Uh, there might be. Oh, 21s maybe? 18 to 21, 21 to 25. But no 18 to 25. I guess that would have worked as well. Anyways, I just need one. So does not for example, to indicate that there are more possible answers. Number five, is it a function? No, it's not a function. To be an, a function, you must have at most one arrow leaving every element in the domain. Uh, there'd be an arrow, if I were drawing an arrow diagram from 16 to 25, but also from 16 to 19. So that makes it not a function. You can't have more than one arrow leaving a given element, 16 in this case. So it is reflexive. It's not, it's not reflexive. It is symmetric. It's not transitive, and it's not a function. I think that was all the questions that were asked, so I guess I'll end this here.